the Sports Network. Sports Cards, Phenomenon of the 90s, is brought to you by Tim Hortons. You've always got time for Tim Hortons. OPG, suppliers of young Canada's favorites. And Pepsi, it's got what it takes. Welcome to the premiere edition of Sports Cards, the Phenomenon of the 90s. It's hard to go anywhere these days without finding someone who collects cards. Every weekend at shows like this one, thousands of people come to buy, to sell, to trade. Well, that's what this show is all about. For the next half hour, we're going to examine this hobby, introduce you to the players, and find out how what used to be a hobby has turned into an obsession for some. It's a fad if people believe that the interest in sports is a fad. I really believe that as long as sports is popular in Canada, the interest in collecting sports memorabilia will be as popular. It's a very addictive hobby. Once you start, it's the kind of thing where you really want to continue. You don't want to stop at one pack. You want to get a whole box. And then you don't want to stop at one box. You want to get the next company's box. If you don't know what's going to be the most valuable or what's going to be the best to have, so you kind of want to have everything. So it's, it's a hobby that has really been growing. Uh, it, it grew at a very slow rate during the 80s, and then all of a sudden it seems to have, have boomed, and, and everybody now is wondering how long can this last. Bruce McNall lent the hobby a lot of legitimacy when he bought the Honus Wagner card. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Bruce McNall is on a different level from just about anyone else. Very few of us, of course, can even afford to buy the Honus Wagner card. But if we did, it wouldn't mean anything to the average person. But Bruce McNall buying the card, what that triggers in a lot of people's minds is, hey, this guy is investing in this, so it must be good. Everything he has touched has turned to gold. When he spent $50 million on Wayne Gretzky, a lot of people thought, that guy's crazy. There's no way it can be worth it. We know now that Wayne Gretzky is worth three or four times that much. He knows what he's doing. So when he did that, he gave a lot of legitimacy to the hobby. Bruce bought this Honest Wagner card for you know, $450,000. And I walked in his office and, it, and it's, uh, he flipped it at me and said, here's $450,000. And I said, ha ah. And it's, you know, it's a little, little card. And, you know, it's great, but I mean, I, to me, I, I guess everything's in the eye of the, uh, the holder. I mean, to me, I don't see it. Um, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the, the, the age of it and the condition it's in, and uh, I, I guess I can justify the expense of it. Uh, it's just staggering to me. People have moved their money from uh, gold and silver and fine wine and paintings, and now they're going into sports cards. Fortune magazine said it was the best investment of the 80s. Uh, to give you an idea, you could have bought six months ago Premier Opeachy Hockey. Uh, factory boxes for $14, $15. That same box is selling here today for $275. If you'd hand me a box of that, I'd give you $200 without any reservation whatsoever. That's how much it's gone up. Well, it's an investment, and I hope to maybe have enough, like if I sell off, to help pay for my college education. And a lot of people think that that's, that's terrible. Why is this kid spending $5 on hockey cards today? Or why is he going out and buying this pack of baseball cards for $3? He should be saving his money. But let's face it, if he wasn't buying hockey cards or baseball cards, he's not putting his money away for his college fund. He'd be going out and buying junk or something that probably no better than hockey cards or baseball cards. So in a way, it's not such a bad thing. And besides, it's teaching them lessons about business. It's teaching them to, to understand the value of money. It's teaching them, to, hopefully, to save, too, because in a lot of cases, they're speculating. They're buying cards of some of these players for a quarter apiece and putting them away and hoping that they're going to become good stars. And maybe in a couple of years, they'll sell them for a couple of dollars. 1971-72, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What, what did you want for it? What are you asking for? Uh, what, I, I don't think it's 65 in the guide? Yeah. Mint? Yeah. The condition it's in is retail probably 40, 45 bucks. That's what it, that's what it would retail. In Winnipeg, it's, uh, I love seeing the, 
the kids start dealing with the cards because it makes me think it's like a stock market for the right, kids, right? right? You know, they're trying to figure out which rookies are going up right. and who's going to have a good year. And uh, I think it's a uh, healthy, uh, you know, a healthy endeavor, uh, uh, lots of excitement in it, and uh, uh, just I'm I'm glad to be part of it myself. And for a lot of people, the lowly sports card is the one connection between the player and the fan. A lot of people who follow sports are, are basically card collectors of interest and memorabilia collectors. And so the industry has really taken off. Uh, it's a wonderful hobby, and it's also a wonderful business. So what was a, a, a little interesting hobby for you and I as children has now become a, a multi-billion dollar business, and yet it still can be fun for the child. It can still be a collector's dream for, for adults. When I played and everything else, I gave them all away. I, I figured, well, they were more or less useless. But I realize now that, now that I have grandchildren, that I should have kept some of them. I have a few, but not as much as I gave away. Thank there was a couple of my rookie cards in New York when I played in New York Rangers, 1952-53. And uh, they're worth, uh, 100 and, with a signature, they're $125 now for a card. And I must have gave thousands of them away for <laughs> nothing, like, you know, when I had them and that. And so I asked one dealer one day, I said, look, if you can get me a card at a reasonable price, pick one up for me. And he, I went to a show and he picked one up for me, and I had to pay $80 for it. <laughs> I think if, you're, if, kid, if you can find a kid playing with cards today, I think, uh, you know, they'd, they'd be criticizing. Well, you just lost 75 cents, you bunt a corner on that, it's not worth it anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't think you see kids playing with them anymore. They've got them all in these little cases. I mean, now everybody's got these little attache cases, they flip them open and they start doing bartering and trades, and they've got little computers with them to hook it out of. It's unbelievable. I, it's great. I mean, if they're having fun with it and it, it, uh, you know, it's not hurting anybody, that thing is terrific. But it's, uh, you know, growing up with it myself, I mean, <laughs> I can't remember. I, I probably destroyed thousands of dollars just on the spokes of my bike. Like I said, it's something that's in the blood, and uh, I want, that's something that I probably was born to collect. I never, never sell them, never sold them since I was a little kid. Now that the hobby's even gotten bigger, and they realize now I, I, the way it has changed, it's even made you want to keep it even more than before. Tony, Larry, this is quite the display that you've got. How long have you been in this business? Only for four and a half months. How, how did you get into it? Well, I found a scrapbook with a lot of old hockey cards from when I was a child, and I decided to try to sell them. And I started going to card shows and sold a few off, and then I thought, well, I should maybe get into the business. And since then, I've put together quite a few cards, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> well, Larry may have only been in this business four months, but I'd like you to meet someone who's been in it his whole life. Angelo Savelli is one of North America's biggest collectors, and every week on Collector's Corner, he's going to be offering us some tips. So this week, let's meet Angelo Savelli. A new business has opened its doors in Hamilton. The proprietor is no stranger to those who live in the city or to those who collect sports memorabilia. Baseball Angelo Savelli is considered by many to possess one of the finest sports card collections in North America. I knew Angelo Savelli for 40 years. We uh, grew up around Bart and Sherman. Uh, he, we was working at Steel Company and he was the only one at that time that had money. And every payday he used to give us $10 each to go to different outlets, stores, and buy baseball cards. He drove us crazy for two weeks, two months, two years. Finally, we gave up, but he wouldn't let us quit. Anyways, uh, he would say, you guys would have the bubble gum out of the cards. I want my cards. Well, he's got the greatest card collection in the world right now, and we got all bad teeth. I'll always be a collector, but the way the hobby has changed now, uh, with all the new cards and that coming out, and the way people are getting into it, the newer kids, every second kid that is born now is into the bubble gum card. So I figured, well, now is probably the time to start, maybe to open up a shop and get my sons interested in that. And they can probably do something pretty good in that. In the collecting, my own thing, I like to be involved in it, but uh, really for the, the money-making part of it, it's still not into me. I'm just strictly into the collecting. It's only the size of the player's face. The newer stuff, like you go day by day. If the guy's going good, he scores three, four goals, and he's a rookie, the card's worth three, four, five dollars. If the common cards are nickels and dimes. So you go by nowadays the, the way the players are going. Uh, in here, I've got cards back from 1887, 
programs, lacrosse, hockey, boxing, football, baseball, just about a mixture of all, all sports I had. Some non-sport as well. I'll let you know, this is just all my double. This is not all my, my collection. What I've got in this store and the older stuff is just stuff that I've had hanging around that I've picked up when I was buying, uh, uh, what do you call it, like collections of cards. And they, they were stuff that I accumulated over the years and I'm just letting a lot of that stuff go. And now that the new stuff is coming, cases and boxes and everything like that, I'm keeping up with that stuff as well. Eventually I'll be picking up a lot of that. If I have a double of it, I'd sell it. But if it's only the one card that I've got of, I would no way sell it. Yeah, I've shown some of my collection. I've done the last three shows that I have done. It hasn't been um, shows that I've been going to and selling cards. It's been just displaying my own uh, personal collection. But I do do shows like Toronto, uh, Kingston, Ottawa, all over, uh, every, like weekends. Now, there are shows every week. Sometimes there's three shows a week nowadays. Years ago, you'd be lucky to get one a month. Angelo Savelli has three Honus Wagner cards, the card that became famous when Bruce McNall and Wayne Gretzky purchased one for $459,000. The reason why his card is valuable also is because um, he didn't go for the smoky, and they pictured his picture in the uh, cigarette packs, and when he saw that, he went to the company who was going to sue them, and by that time, there was probably, who knows, maybe 50 to 100, probably at the most, that was put out. And uh, the rest, collectors had them, or some old fella had them, a grandfather or something, and had them stuck in the Bible or something like that there, and eventually, over the years, since 1910, the odd one come up. All right, here's two great hockey players right here. If you're looking down at these cards, one is Bobby Orr with the brush cut, right? But And uh, that one goes for what, Ed? The Bobby Orr bought 1800 to 2000 in that Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you uh, two grand for it right now. Bobby just told me he'd give you two grand for it now. Well, I guess not. But here, look at this guy right here. Put it right down there. Now, there's a card, right? Todd Cherry playing for the Barry Flyers right there. The only card. You think that's my only card? Oh, no, folks. Watch this. Look at this one. How am I holding this? Am I holding this all right? Look at there. What's that one go for? That one there about now 15 or 20 bucks. 15 or 20 bucks? What are you laughing at? Bobby Clark only goes for five bucks, right? It's hard to understand, but what, what, from what he tells us all the time, that collecting is in his blood. But we, it's like it's hard for us to comprehend that because we think of the, the dollar signs like anybody in their right mind would, would think of the money. But not my dad. He just uh, just wants to keep collecting. Does that say something about him? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's he's a fanatic. Yeah, and, <laughs> and nothing will change it. And uh, if he ever passed away, I couldn't sell it because he'd probably haunt, come oh. back and haunt us. Bob Simpson. <laughs> Just like I said, that's something that's in the blood, and uh, I want, that's something that I probably was born to collect and never, never sell them. Never sold them since I was a little kid. And now that the hobby's even gotten bigger and they realize now I, I, the way it has changed, it's even made you want to keep it even more than before. The way it's turned. With all these little kids getting into it, it brings you back to childhood. Geez, I'm... Am I ever lucky that I've still got this stuff and never sold it or let it go years ago when I could have turned it over? Because I used to go down to shows down the States and I found out the prices of stuff there which they didn't know anything in Canada on these cards. I could have easily taken that stuff when I was going to shows to the States and sold it all down there. My Mantles, my DiMaggio's, my Babe Ruth cards, all of that stuff could have been all gone if I wasn't really into it as a, you know, a real avid collector. And I've still got it, and thank God I have. Well, that's when you know that you really made it, when you get that first uh, baseball card in the big league, and you find out that, uh, you know, you can, you can have something you can take home and, uh, like, paste on the wall and say, yeah, I got my first, bubble, my first baseball card. But that was the big thrill. And just in case they don't believe that you ever made it to the big league, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got the proof right there on the back of a bubble gum card. We're basically working around the clock 
uh, six and a half days a week producing hockey cars at the moment. I would never part with my Nolan Ryan rookie because it took about three years to get. I would never part with my Daryl Sutter card because he was my favorite player and I have every one of his cards. Yes, it would be my Gordy Howe card from 1950, 51. Sergei Federov because his card will always go up and it's so high right now so I wouldn't never sell it. Anyone who's serious about collecting cards will recognize this name. I recently went down to London, Ontario to visit the headquarters of OPC. It seems odd that a company could be based on a pink piece of gum, but that's the story of Opeachy. Eighty years ago, the McDermott brothers began the company. Gypsy Gum was their first product. And they chose the name Opeachy from the poem the Song of Hiawatha, written by Longfellow, and it's an Ojibwe, Ojibwe Indian word meaning the robin. And maybe at that time, uh, it might have been a, a kid's phrase, Opeachy, like Opeachy Keen. So hence the word Opeachy, and that's uh, stood the test of time, and it's still known as Opeachy Company. The first set of cards we manufactured, as I understand it, were hockey cards in 1933, called Series A which made sense, I guess. Hockey was becoming popular at the time, and uh, it seemed like a, a good way of selling more gum. And uh, we've seen the, uh, the card gum business grow tremendously in the last couple of years. Five years ago, uh, hockey cards probably represented 5-8% of the volume of our business. Now, I would suggest it's closer to 30% uh, of our volume of business. Probably a big influence in the uh, hockey card collectible business in North America was Gretzky being traded from Edmonton to Los Angeles. I mean, here was a, a, a number one sports figure in North America leaving the comforts of Edmonton, taking on the challenges of selling hockey in California. And uh, being the individual he is, uh, People flocked to him, not only watching hockey and television and going to the games, but uh, then getting into the collectible market. Maybe the people realized, hey, Wayne Gretzky's rookie card was valuable. Along with success comes those who want to cash in on a good thing. The first counterfeit card showed up three years ago when someone began to produce a fake Gretzky rookie card. Opeachy notified the vendors and collectors, but it didn't stop there. Unfortunately, last year, uh, Brett Hull's rookie card from 88-89 appeared, along with a couple of other players, another Gretzky card, and Joe Neuendijk. And again, we spotted those and told the trade how they could uh, spot a, uh, a uh, counterfeit card. So it's, it's a concern which we have. We are diligently attempting to find the source. We have private investigators constantly working on it, and uh, we will get to the source. In front of you, you see uh, five 1988-89 uh, Brett Hall rookie cards, of which three are real and two are fake. And uh, they've done a good job uh, of counterfeiting it, but if you look very closely on this card, which is the real one, there's a ye little yellow dot up on the uh, pin. And on this one, which is the fake, there is no yellow dot. And the difference being that on the real one, uh, there was a dust mark on the negative, and it was transferred to the printing cylinder, and as a result, on all of the real cards, there is that ye little yellow dot up in the pinprint. We pride ourselves as much as possible in having our cards 100% correct, both the fronts uh, identifying the player and the statistics in the back. And if an error does occur, uh, it is our policy never to correct that error and to reprint that card. Uh, if there's an error in that we see right at the start, that error will be through the whole run. Even if we make a second run of the card, we won't correct that error. After 58 years of producing cards, Opeachy has a few rare collectibles of their own. 
In some old boxes, they found some old baseball cards. They put them out on display until someone realized what a find it was. And then I had somebody who was knowledgeable on cards uh, pointed out to me that this was a, a 1952 Tots baseball set. And it, of course, is one of the first sets of cards uh, manufactured. And this is very rare in that it's a uh, uh, unopened box of uh, Tops cards. And uh, somebody said that this may be the only one in existence. Now, how true that is, I'm not sure. The value of the Mickey Mantle card varies from $7,000 to $40,000. A complete set is probably in the $50,000 range. So whether this unopened box is worth $50,000 or $100,000, I don't know. I guess it would be the uh, only way we'd know that is, is if you sold it and what the market would ask for it. Uh, my major concern right now is that some of the prices, the retail prices of cards have got a bit expensive for the kids and maybe they're not having the fun they used to have when I was younger such as throwing them up against the wall playing games putting them on their bike trading saving uh, goalies saving specific teams now it appears that the kids are buying them specifically for their financial value and immediately putting them in a plastic uh, sleeve and putting them away hoping they're going to gain in value so my concern is that the kids aren't having the fun that they should be having collecting baseball and hockey cards the quality of cards have improved over the years. This year, there will be 528 cards in all. Nice to see that some things never change. This year, there will be nine cards, a Soviet insert, and yes, a piece of gum. Station J, Toronto, Ontario, M4J, 4Y1. Next week on Sports Cards. 1985, Brett Saberhagen won the Cy Young Award. And of course, the Royals winning the uh, World Series. And uh, this was the uniform that he wore uh, in that series and also uh, getting the Cy Young. And that was, uh, I think, for my 23rd birthday. 1952. Joe Black, $200, $250 card. It would be in mint condition. There's creases on that card, which reduces the value to about $50 to $60. Well, that's it. The premier edition of sports cards, the phenomenon of the 90s is, well, I guess it's now a collector's item. We'll be back next week with more. And until then, I'm Teresa Hergert. And remember, keep on collecting. Sports Cards, Phenomenon of the 90s, has been brought to you by Tim Hortons. You've always got time for Tim Hortons. Opeachy, suppliers of young Canada's favorites. And Pepsi, it's got what it takes. <laughs>